Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. The following are a collection of five true stories that challenge our understanding of time. The first story takes place in the 1950s Liverpool Street with Frank, then witness a family's encounter in Victoria era South Australia, then explore a 1930s London underpass with Ronnie, relive a 1954 tennis scene with Nick and Larry in Massachusetts, and then accompany Neil on his bewildering stroll between 1970s and 1930s New York. These stories take us into the mystifying world of time slips, where the past and present intertwine in inexplicable ways. A bold rewind. One Saturday in July 1996, Frank, an off-duty police officer, and his wife Carol decided to spend their day shopping in the busy Bowl Street area of Liverpool. They parted ways at Central Station. Carol headed to Dylan's bookshop while Frank made his way to HMV in search of a particular CD. As he approached the slope near the iconic Lyceum Post Office and Cafe, a peculiar silence enveloped him. It felt as though he'd walked into a quiet bubble, separated from the surrounding noise. Suddenly, a van reminiscent of the 1950s came hurtling towards him, its horn blaring. As it whisked past, narrowly avoiding him, he glimpsed the name Kaplan's emblazoned on its side. Startled, Frank realised he had inexplicably wandered into the middle of the road. Regaining his bearings, he was taken aback to see that Dylan's bookstore now bore the name Cripps. Peering inside, he expected rows of books, but instead found an array of women's handbags and shoes. As he scanned his surroundings, he suddenly noticed that the people around looked as if they'd stepped straight out of the 1940s. The retire, a vivid throwback. However, amidst the crowd, a young woman in her early 20s caught his eye. She wore a modern lime-coloured top and carried a handbag with a modern brand logo. This semblance of his own time brought a wave of relief over Frank, and he decided to follow her into Cripps. But the moment they stepped inside, the scene morphed instantly. The once handbag and shoe store transformed back into the familiar Dylan's bookshop. Bewildered, he reached out to the young lady, gently touching her arm. Did you see that? She looked equally surprised, responding, I did. I was expecting a clothing store, but it's filled with books. Later research revealed that both Cripps and Kaplan's were well-known businesses based in Liverpool during the 1950s. However, whether a Cripps outlet had in fact been located at that address sometime in the 1950s was unable to be determined. Same town from another time. In 1995, a family journeying from the north of South Australia to the Barossa Valley had an unusual experience as they travelled through a familiar small town. Their account was later reported to paranormal.about.com. Upon emerging from a hilly area, the family found themselves on a straight and level stretch of road with a clear view of the small town ahead named Allendale North, located just outside of Kapunda. What caught their attention was a large crowd outside the town's hotel. This was odd, as their previous trips through the town had only ever shown a couple of cars outside the establishment. As they approached, the details of the crowd became clearer. It appeared to be some sort of fair or gathering. Intriguingly, every individual was dressed in clothing that resembled the early 1800s, strongly reflecting a Victorian style. The family's vehicle had to slow its pace, and to their astonishment, they spotted a horse and buggy on their left. Making their way through the crowd, they noticed a young boy around seven years old, gripping a woman's hand, presumably his mother. The boy, dressed in a navy blue sailor outfit adorned with white frills, was particularly noticeable due to focused stares from his intense blue eyes. As they drove past, the boy's gaze remained locked onto them, even though none of the others in the crowd seemed to acknowledge the family's passage. Moments later, the wife, having been previously asleep, awoke and asked where they were. When the suggestion to stop arose, a glance in the rearview mirror revealed a completely empty main street. The baffling experience left them with lingering questions. Had they momentarily travelled back in time while travelling through the town? 
And what of the young boy clutching his mother's hand? Was he the lone observer of a mysterious glimpse into the future? If so, why did he seem to be the only one able to see them? Echoes from the underpass. Ronnie Mitchell resided in London. It was a chilly Saturday evening in late October 1969, and Ronnie was making his way home. His route required him to pass through an underpass beneath a busy north circular road. Despite the hour and the cold, he was taken aback to see a group of five children down there collecting pennies in preparation for Guy Fawkes' night. It was peculiar, considering the eldest girl looked no older than twelve, with the rest being even younger. What truly startled Ronnie, though, was their attire. Their clothes seemed to have been plucked straight from the 1920s or 30s. Their manner of speech was reminiscent of characters from a Charles Dickens novel. Overhearing one of the boys, he said, The other gent gave me a florin. Considering it was the late 60s, it seemed strange to Ronnie that a boy of his age would even have any idea what a florin was, an old English coin worth, for the time, two shillings. The term gent also seemed very antiquated for such a young child to say. Kids of that era would typically use words like geezer or bloke. The eldest girl then approached Ronnie, politely asking, Evening, sir. Penny for the guy? Please, sir. Taken aback by courtesy, Ronnie replied that he had no money on him. The girl, in a charming gesture, slid her arm through his and gently felt his sleeve, playing chiding. Oh, yes you do, sir. Oh, you're a fine gent. You do have money. Despite Ronnie's insistence to the contrary, instead of an anticipated rude outburst, she simply said, Okay, thank you, sir. You have a good evening, sir. Feeling a need to offer the kid something, Ronnie retrieved the silver sixpence from his pocket, beckoning the girl. Tossing her the coin, he was rewarded with a heartfelt thank you and a radiant smile. Then he continued on his way. The odd encounter gnawed at Ronnie. Who were these seemingly out-of-time children? He inquired amongst the locals if any children had tragically died in the underpass during World War II, but none could recall such an event. Were they spirits, children from a long-forgotten time? The mystery would likely remain forever unsolved. A backspin to 1954. 26 years ago, Nick Vargas and his friend Larry had an extraordinary experience. It was a late August day in 1997. Meeting up in Cambridge, Massachusetts at midday, the two had plans for a tennis match. Neither had played in that specific area before, so they roamed around in search of tennis courts. Approaching a traffic officer managing a small construction detour, Nick inquired about the nearest courts. After some contemplation, the officer provided concise directions to some courts just two blocks away. Following the provided directions, Nick steered the car right into a driveway, revealing the tennis court they sought. Oddly, every player was dressed in pristine white, the pair's attention was particularly drawn to a striking young woman, clad in a white tennis outfit preparing to serve on the far right court. While observing, they decided to wait for an available court. Nick parked the car in an adjacent lot. However, on exiting the vehicle, the scene had transformed entirely. The tennis courts vanished, the neighbouring field disappeared, and in their place stood a large cement building, a building they're certain they did not see whilst pulling in. While the bizarre situation should have bewildered them, their initial reaction was more of annoyance than confusion. They brushed off the uncanny event as too weird and sought another place to play tennis. It was only during later reflections that they truly delved into the peculiarity of their experience. Intrigued, Nick conducted some research about the location. To his astonishment, Tennis courts had indeed once stood there, but had been demolished back in 1954. It wasn't until that point that the burning question finally presented itself. Had they unintentionally journeyed back in time? Their conviction in their shared experience was unwavering. Nick also couldn't help but wonder, had the tennis players of the past noticed their brief intrusion into their era? It was a question that would likely never be answered. Twelve minutes for decades. In 1972, Neil Osborne, an 18 year old living in his college dorm in New York, experienced what he believed to be a time slip. 
It was a sombre July day as Neil was mourning the recent loss of his cousin. Feeling depressed, Neil decided to take a short three-block stroll to the local shops. He was certain that it was 3pm when he set out. However, as he crossed the street away from his dormitory and entered the first block, an eerie silence engulfed his surroundings. It was during this unsettling stillness that he noticed the houses had changed. They appeared smaller and seemed reminiscent of 1930s architecture. The streets were devoid of cars and there were no driveways or garages in sight. Everything also seemed to have a dull and washed out appearance to it, as though it had lost its colourful vibrancy. And though it was summer, the trees were barren, resembling winter. Out loud, Neil uttered, Why is it so quiet? But his voice sounded strange, with a distorted, buzzy, metallic quality about it. Reaching the main street with the stores, everything shifted back to its familiar state. However, the strangeness resumed once again during his return journey. He was taken aback to find an enormous hill replacing the familiar houses he often passed by on the second block. By the time Neil reached his dormitory, everything had returned to his normal state. The sounds, colours and general vividness. Although he felt he had been out for about 90 minutes, he was stunned to find that it was only 3.12pm when he entered his room. Another clock displaying the same time confirmed the puzzling discrepancy that only 12 minutes had passed since he'd left. Intrigued, Neil retraced his steps the next day and to his amazement, the mysterious phenomena repeated itself. However, the return journey was slightly different this time as the large hill had vanished, replaced by the old-fashioned homes he'd seen the previous day. From that day forward, everything on that route appeared normal, with modern homes, vibrant colours, clear sounds and lush trees. 